So Nick and Oliver are twins, and they want to throw a birthday party. They have a limited budget, so they want to get as much yummy food as they can for the lowest price possible. Sure thing, they want to have some pizza. An 18-inch pizza costs $5. Wow, on what planet? Oh wait, this is hypothetical. Meanwhile, a 12-inch pizza costs $3. Oliver is a geometry geek, and he says it's better to grab one 18-inch pizza. Nick doesn't feel this way. So, what's bigger, one 18-inch pizza or two 12-inch ones? Well, there are two answers to that. Geometry claims the area of two 12-inch pizzas is equal to 226 square inches, but the 18-inch one is 254 square inches. Well, from this point of view, you'd rather grab an 18-inch one. But hey, geometry and cooking are two completely different things. So it's the weight that matters here. The more the weight, the more calories there are. So you know what to choose, and there will be enough pizza for everyone. (laughs) Seems like Nick's right. How can you divide five pairs among five people so that each of them gets a pair and at the same time, one pair remains in the basket? Well, this one's pretty easy. No need to cut any of those pears. Just let one person take the pear right in the basket. There are two ropes, and each of them burns completely in one hour. There is also an ordinary box of matches. How can we measure exactly 45 minutes of time using only these objects given to us? There's a condition, though. Ropes are not allowed to be torn. We set fire to one rope from two ends. It'll burn out in a half an hour. At the same time, we set fire to the second from one end, and half of it will burn in half an hour. When the first burns out, we set fire to the second from the second end. From both ends, it will now burn out in 15 minutes. It will take 45 minutes in total. The passenger elevator rises to the fifth floor, twice as fast as the freight elevator to the third floor. Which elevator will come first? Freight to the third floor or passenger to the fifth? If they started moving from the first floor at the same time. Hey, have you noticed that the answer is hidden in the question? Yeah, a passenger elevator goes up faster. Okay. Four players sat down one evening and played all night until dawn. When they finished playing, everyone counted how much money he had in his wallet. It turned out that during the night, everyone got $100 more, and no one lost. How can it be? Nope, these guys didn't play cards. These were musicians. They played as a quartet, after which they received their fee. Max has got to get up at 7 in the morning every weekday to get to work on time. Unfortunately, his alarm clock is not quite accurate. In three days, he's 9 minutes behind. Assuming that at 11 p.m. on Sunday, Max checks his watch and sets the correct time, when does the alarm actually go off on Tuesday morning? The clock is 3 minutes behind per day, or 1 minute every 8 hours. From Sunday at 11 p.m. to Tuesday at 7 a.m., there will be 32 hours. Thus, the clock will be 4 minutes behind, and the alarm will ring at 7.04. One trader plans to go around 30 markets to find a suitable place for future trading. In his hands, he has 3 bags of apples that cannot be left at home. The merchant is forced to carry fruit with him. Unfortunately, everyone who enters the market with food must pay a tax. One fruit from each bag. How many apples will the merchant have after visiting all the markets if he's interested in keeping as many fruits as possible? There are some conditions. First off, keep in mind that, initially, 
the merchant had 90 fruits. Next, remember that each bag can hold no more than 30 apples. And the last one, apples can be transferred from bag to bag. After visiting 10 markets, the merchant will completely empty one bag. The second bag will be empty after visiting 15 more markets. Now, there are only 5 markets left, and the merchant will leave 5 apples there. He'll be left with 25 fruits, and he probably won't find a decent place for trading. I guess the merchant should start some small business online. Four pairs of friends decided to go on a picnic together. Mary ate 3 sandwiches, Kathy 2, Lena 4, and Maria 1 sandwich. Jack ate as many sandwiches as his girlfriend Mary, Bob twice as much as his girlfriend, Alex three times as much, and Vincent four times as much as his girlfriend. Altogether, they ate 32 sandwiches. What's the name of Alex's girlfriend? It's Maria. Jack ate three sandwiches, and his girlfriend is Mary. Bob pounded down eight sandwiches, and his girlfriend is Lena. Vincent wolfed down eight sandwiches, while Kathy only ate two. Alex ate three sandwiches, so his girlfriend is Maria. Hey, I can read your mind! If you don't believe me, then think of a number. Keep it simple. You'll have to do a bit of math here. And you may probably need a calculator to play this guessing game with me. So, you think of a number. Now, multiply it by 3. Done? Okay. Now add 6. Next step, you need to divide this number by 3. Now subtract the number you thought of from the resulting number. Let me guess, as a result, you got 2, right? No magic involved, it's just a smart math riddle. It works with any number. The savanna was on fire. Three lions and three zebras fled to save their lives. To escape the fire, they need to cross a river swarming with crocodiles. There was a raft nearby that can carry two animals at a time, and it needs at least one lion or one zebra on board. Also, the lions can't outnumber the zebras on either side of the river even for a moment. You know, lunch? So, how can all of them safely cross the river? First, a lion and a zebra should cross the river. The lion stays on the other bank and the zebra goes back. For the second crossing, the two lions take the raft, but only one of them stays on the other side. One lion returns. Next, two zebras cross the river. To send the raft back, there should be a lion and a zebra on it. Now there is a lion and a zebra on the safe bank, and two zebras and two lions on the bank that's on fire. For the next crossing, two zebras take the raft. Now all the zebras are safe, and the lion can bring his friends one by one. Mr. Daniels is a math professor. He wanted to make it simpler for his students, so he suggested an idea. Whoever can solve the problem he gives does not have to take the exam at the end of the semester. The problem was, how can the number 5 be half of 4? A. If you were Mr. Daniel's student, would you have to take the exam? Well, to solve the problem, you need to use Roman numerals and not Arabic, as we typically do. In Roman numerals, IV stands for 4 and V stands for 5. Seems like 5 is indeed half of 4, according to this logic. Ready for a short one? Of course you are. So, if it's an odd number, but if you take away a letter and it becomes even, what number is that? It's 7. Just take away the S, and you'll get the word even. Yeah, I know. And this one is just a pro tip for you. 
If you ever struggle to learn all the digits in the pi number, just give up. There are trillions of them. But there is a trick to remember at least seven. Just say, how I wish I could calculate pi. There are three letters in how, one in I, four in wish, one in I again, five in could, nine in calculate, and two in pi. You got 3.141592. Yeah, I could have used that. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.